Hello, welcome everyone. We're just going to get started in a minute. If you want to grab your cup of tea and join us at the front. Hello to everyone joining us online as well. Um, it's really good to see so many students. It's been a very quiet summer. Uh, it's uh, good to see you all. Okay. All right, welcome to the College of Social Sciences. I should probably get the clicker. Um, we are the College of Social Sciences. We are the School of Business, Education, Government and Social Policy. Can we cut the music? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sounds a bit loungy. Um, uh, and we are the largest college in the, social, in, uh, the university. Uh, my name is Rose. I'm the Student Experience and Wellbeing Manager for the College of Social Sciences. So I manage the Student Experience and Wellbeing teams who are here to support and uh, help you develop um, through your time at university. So we've got a Slido going today, so at any point, if you've got a question for us, um, there'll be the, the Slido and the number at the bottom of the screen, but if you wanted to scan the QR code now, uh, and so you can have that ready for if you have any questions. I'll just leave that up there for a second. Okay, has everyone got that? Great, there will be another chance to see that again, don't worry. So, as I was saying, we are the College of Social Sciences. We are the largest college in the university, um, and basically what a college is is an umbrella term for all of the different schools within it. So, I just want to do a little hands up. Who is here from the business school? Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. The business school is huge, so <laughs> there's quite a lot of you. Who is here from the School of Social Policy? Yeah, good number. Who's here from Education? Yeah. <laughs> And who's here from the School of Government? 
great. Okay, so we've got a really good even spread there. That's fabulous. Um, so yeah, so we are one of the largest college, I'm, I'm sure uh, Richard will go into this later, we are, one of the, we are the largest college in the university, we're also one of the most diverse, we've got most of the international students here, most of the postgraduate students here, um, and it gives you a really good uh, kind of network of people to, to, to get on with beyond just your program, so you're part of the big college community. So today we've got our speakers, we've got Professor Richard Black, who is the head of the College of Social Sciences, who will be speaking first. Then we've got Professor Deborah Longworth, who's the Pro Vice-Chancellor of Education. Then we've got Professor uh, Celia Greenway, Director of Student uh, Engagement. And then Anne-Marie Glover, Deputy, Deputy Director of Education. Um, and Nessa Chigario um, from, the education, from the Guild of Students, who's the Education Officer. And then myself, who will stop speaking soon, I promise. So I'm going to hand over to Richard, um, if you want to come and take the stage. Can you hear me if I speak like this? Yes. Good. OK. Um, well, welcome to all of you. Um, and thank you, Rose, uh, for organizing all of this. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to the College of Social Sciences and to the University of Birmingham. The first thing I want to say is, well done. Um, you've got to the end of Welcome Week, uh, which is great. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves this week, um, found lots of societies, things to do, new friends, worked your way around campus. Um, and also apologies that it wasn't uh, quite the full Welcome Week that we were expecting, but obviously there was something rather important happening on Monday elsewhere. Um, I also want to say well done for getting to the University of Birmingham in the first place. Um, we are a, a top 100 global university. Um, it's not easy to get in, but having said that, every one of you deserves to be here. Um, and you all come from, I think, really different circumstances. We've already seen that you're in four very different schools. Um, you will, be, you will have come here from uh, all around the world. Uh, as Rose mentioned, we have the, uh, the largest group of international students of any college in the university, and we have students from countries uh, in all parts of the globe. And you will also have different experiences before coming to university. And we celebrate that diversity in the college. It really matters to us. You all bring your different experiences so you can all learn from each other as well as learning from us uh, and from your tutors. So welcome, well done, um, and I hope that you're going to have a fabulous time with us as well as learning lots. Now, I want to ask a question. Um, this might not be the question you'd expect me to ask, um, but Uber or public transport? Um, how many of you prefer Uber? Yeah, some. How many of you prefer public transport? Great. How many of you think that was a stupid question? <laughs> the point is, Uber or public transport, it depends. If you're stuck in the middle of the night, uh, somewhere out of the way, uh, and you can call an Uber, you know, Uber wins hands down. Um, if you want to go this evening to London, you'd be mad to get an Uber. And the point is a serious one. The social sciences is all about, or at least partly about, asking about the context for the questions that you are asking. And then more than that, university is a place where you ask whether the question is the right question. Uh, it, most of you, I, I guess not all of you, will have come from uh, doing A-levels or other exams in schools, where typically you will have learnt what's on the curriculum um, so that you demonstrate that you have absorbed the knowledge that you're expected to learn. University is a place where you learn how to learn. So I want you to remember that. Ask whether the question that you're being asked is the right question is there a different way of asking the question, a, a better way? And I think Rose was expecting me to tell you all about the College of Social Sciences, um, but actually I'm not going to do that because I reckon uh, by Monday you'll probably have forgotten, and in any case, you'll get to understand what we're all about over the course of the next 
three years. So I want to leave with um, something motivational. Um, and when I was looking for something to say, um, I came across a YouTube video that went viral a few years ago um, by US Navy Admiral William McRaven, uh, who, who in his commencement speech at the University of Texas said, if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. Um, now, I don't want to leave you with that because, frankly, military bed making is not my kind of thing. And in any case, a commencement speech is not what you might think it is. It's actually at the end rather than at the beginning. So let me leave you instead uh, with some words from um, former US President Barack Obama instead. He said, I hope that you will decide to ground yourself in values that last, like honesty, hard work, responsibility, fairness, generosity, and respect for others. You won't get it right every time. You'll make mistakes. We all do. But if you listen to the truth that's inside yourself, even when it's hard, even when it's inconvenient, people will notice. You'll be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. That's what I hope we're here about in the School of, uh, College of Social Sciences, being part of the solution. I really hope you enjoy being with us, and thank you for coming this morning. And next we have Professor Deborah Longworth. Thanks, Rose, and good morning, everyone. Um, as Pro Vice Chancellor for Education at the University, it's one of the real pleasures of my job to be able to, I suppose, formally welcome you in your first week um, to the university. As a professor of English literature, I'm fairly certain I won't be teaching any of you over the, um, over the three or four years of your time with us. Um, but I do hope to see many of you around campus, at events, in some of the student focus groups that I'm often involved in, or at least at some point before I'm probably one of those who may confer your degrees um, at the end of your programme. But I was very privileged on Monday to represent the university at the funeral of the Queen. And, and while I was there, we had to be seated by about eight o'clock in the morning, so we had to wait for a very long time. I was thinking about what I wanted to, to say to you as, as part of this introduction. And what struck me and what I was sort of seeing all across London that morning was a whole series of strangers coming together and actually developing into, building into a community. You will make very good friends during your time with us, friends that you will, will keep for life. But at this point, everything will seem very new. You're probably meeting people for the first time. What I saw on Monday was people coming together from all over the world, all over the country, all over the world, from different cultures, backgrounds, never having met each other before. But we all had one thing in common. None of us really knew what to do. None of us had been to the funeral of the British monarch before. Um, we had our instructions, we had our timetable of where we needed to be. We knew what we were supposed to be doing. But nobody had ever really lived through it before. We didn't really know how to act. And that was the same for everyone, for the police, the servicemen, the stewards in the abbey, those of us sat in the nave, heads of state from across the world, even to President Biden, who turned up a bit late and shuffled in looking a bit sheepish. And what people did do was smile at each other and say hello. And in the queue to get into the abbey, probably about every five steps or so, um, there was a member of the police, and every single one of them would say hello or good morning and smile. And by about halfway down, someone said, I'm not really sure what else to do. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say good morning. It's a funeral. Do you say good morning on a funeral? Um, and everyone just felt a bit awkward, but very quickly, we became a community who could speak with each other and spend those few hours together. And I think if I ever saw those people I was sat with or in the queue with, again, we would have some way of connecting. We would recognize each other and, and speak with each other. And our community at the university includes students, staff, researchers from all over the world, from different cultures, different backgrounds. For all of you as first years, 
university is a new experience. None of you have done it before. And I suppose my, my first piece of advice to you is to turn around and say hello, smile to those people sat next to you, to those people in the queue for coffee or getting their um, pass for the library or just passing you across campus. And to make a plea to you that if, those, if people reach out to you to smile and say hello back, otherwise we all look a bit crazy. It's that kindness, it's that basic human connection that builds a community out of strangers and from which you will develop both very strong friendships but also a broader bond across all those who work and study here. My second piece of advice is to make the most of everything that the university has to offer. It is our job to help you develop academically, personally, professionally during your time with us. But that development is about so much more than your program, your assessments and your grades. And I cannot emphasize that enough. You will enjoy a really rich and rewarding education with us. Please do engage with everything that your teachers, um, so that your tutors are teaching you. All the varied learning opportunities on your programs and across the university more broadly but also make sure that you take the time to join clubs and societies or to volunteer as a student representative or ambassador of various kinds, to take part in service work in our community, to be involved in focus groups, There's a whole range of opportunities available to you. All of those things contribute to your development. All of those things build and round and give sort of granularity to your CV. And they help to form you into the kinds of graduates that our employer partners are always telling us they are really looking for in those students applying to them after university. So the first piece of advice is to smile and say hello. The second piece of advice is to take every opportunity to get involved. But have a wonderful first term and three or four years with, with us. Um, we're delighted to have you here and welcome from me. Thank you. Now we have Professor Celia Greenaway. Good morning, and as you can see, the marvel of the internet is that you don't age. Right, so hello, I'm Celia, and I feel very lucky to be able to speak to you this morning. I work alongside Deborah, and I'm responsible for personal academic tutoring and student representation. So all of you, during your time at Birmingham, will be assigned a personal academic tutor. And it's your opportunity to work with an academic who will help you progress and help you develop your skills academically and socially. So I urge you to make the most of your tutorials while you're here. We at the university regard the tutorial system as a hub. So actually, it's really important that in these first few weeks, if you haven't met your tutor, tell somebody in your school, tell your senior tutor, and make sure that you make contact with your personal tutor. So as I said, we have the tutorial as a hub. Your tutor will be able to give you advice with your academic skills. So for example, if you don't know how to write an essay and you've forgotten how to write a report, you can talk to your personal academic tutor and they will refer you to the academic skills support that the university has. We also are aware that some of you may have um, emotional and social issues and may actually need support beyond the tutorial. So your personal tutor will refer you to our extensive wellbeing services. But as Deborah was saying, we urge you to make the most of your university experience. And I work alongside the Guild of Students who will have a number of clubs and societies that you can join and make the most of. My daughter was a student here. She actually didn't study in the College of Social Sciences. She studied in the College of Arts and Law. She joined the Guild and she volunteered for the St. John's Ambulance Society. I actually thought this is very strange. She'd shown no interest in health or indeed first aid before she joined. But she told me it was because it was a good way of getting into gigs. 
Now, I accepted this, but actually that volunteering and that joining of the society led on to her eventual career. So she now is an occupational therapist. So from helping people through the St. John's Ambulance, she realized that actually that's what she wanted to do. So some of you today may not know what you want to do, and the subject you're studying may not be the subject that you end up doing as a career. But we want you to know that we think more of you than your subject. We think of you, and we want you to be happy while you're studying with us. So also, Deborah talk, spoke about the community of strangers, and I'm going to talk to you about being a community of learners. And I'd like you to sort of look around the room, actually, and think, we're all new. So some of you may be new to Birmingham, some of you may not be, but actually, you're all new to this experience. So actually, if you know something about Birmingham, tell the other students on your course places to eat, places to go out, because you have insider knowledge. But some of you may be thinking, I'm not worthy of being at Birmingham, but you are. You are. Richard said, congratulations. We feel it's not that you're lucky to be here. It, we're lucky to have you. And I really want to emphasize that. Um, one of the things I would say is that... Um, these first connections are really important. I met my uh, best friend on my second day at university. He is godfather to my child. He was best man at our wedding. And my daughter is bridesmaid at his daughter's wedding. And his daughter is bridesmaid at my wedding. So a very, very significant friendship. I also met my husband in the first week at university. I'm not claiming that I can guarantee that you will meet a life partner. I'm also not guaranteeing that we are a, a marriage bureau. But what I am saying is that you're significant to one another, and actually, you are your best form of support. I am ta I've talked about all the support services that the university offers, but actually, you and your colleagues will be the best support to each other during assignment time. You are the people, if you're thinking, I don't understand this, you can actually speak to your colleague, perhaps find they don't understand this either, but that's actually comforting. So use each other, form a peer network. And finally, this sounds a bit daunting, we are thinking of you not just today, this week. We're thinking it's, this is the first week of the rest of your lives. So to carry on the sort of, that's what people say to you when you get married. So actually, this is the first week, but we're thinking of when you leave here, beyond Birmingham. And we want you to sort of gather those skills and develop. And that's, we go back to the tutorial, look at those things that you can do. So volunteer, make the most of your opportunities. I work in the School of Education, so I might actually teach some of you, and I'm looking forward to meeting you across the corridor. But actually, if you see me across campus, smile and wave, and I will smile and wave back. So I'm now going to hand over to Ness, who's going to talk to you about the work we do with the Guild of Students and all the opportunities that you can join this week. It's been lovely speaking to you, and I hope to speak to some of you after the event. Thanks, Celia. Hi, I'm Ness. I'm coming from the Guild of Students. Um, I've been given the opportunity to come say hey. Um, yeah, that's me. <laughs> the Guild of Students is your student union, and we are driven by you, and we're led by seven elected officers, including myself, with different roles and remits on making your student experience as great as possible. What is the Guild of Students? As I said, the Guild of Students is your student union, which has over 38,000 members, all students here at the university. And we're in charge of all things related to your social experience, minus beyond, basically beyond the lecture theatres. We're here to represent your academic interests, and through that, we have a team of over 1,300 student reps, and I'd encourage you to apply. It's a great opportunity to meet people on your course and also help through different academic issues on your course and improving the academic learning. We also have a group of different uh, advisors and guiders, guide, guiders, sorry, <laughs> who will help you with advice and help improve and help you tackle any issues that you're facing. 
We also have community safety and housing wardens who are there to help you with any safety issues throughout your community, but hopefully you won't have any. We're there to help you meet new people and learn new skills. And as Celia and Deborah both mentioned, we have a group of different clubs, societies, and activities. We have over 350 types. And I hope that you went to some of the society's fairs or the sports fair and met new people there and saw what we have to offer. And if you didn't like any, you also have the opportunity to start your own, which I think is an awesome thing that we have at our university. Along with that, we're there to make sure you have fun at uni. So we have an open door policy would love to come see you and just come say hey. But yeah, we have lots of different things like the welcome back marquee, which is on campus today, along with a give it a go fair and a Selly Oak sports day on Sunday, which is completely free, lots of food, lots of sports. So we hope to see you there. Any questions or just want to come say hey, you can email any of these or message us on social media. Thank you. Next, finally, uh, last but certainly not least, one of my favorite people, uh, Anne-Marie Glover. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Um, it's lovely to see so many of you here. And as Richard has said, it's not just welcome, it's congratulations. Um, my name's Anne-Marie Glover, and I am the College Deputy Director of Education I'm also a social work academic in the School of Social Policy. So if you're here studying a professional social work qualifying program, then you will most likely meet me probably in your final year. Over the next few minutes, I'm gonna to talk to you about three things. The first one is our commitment to giving you the best student experience that you can have. The second thing is the support that we offer including a focus on your well-being. And the last area is how you can get involved in your programme and, as we've said, your community to make it the best that it can be for you. So firstly, in relation to student experience, you've heard a little bit from Richard about the college, about the type of programmes that we do, about the schools that we have here. One of the things that you will hopefully have taken away is that we are an incredibly diverse college. As a group of students, um, you all come here with different backgrounds and different experience. Some of you may have come straight from school or college. Some of you may be mature students with caring responsibilities. Others of you may be international students quite away from home. Others of you may be doing a distance online program and watching online today. Whatever your experience, our focus is, is on giving you um, the support that you need, the highest quality experience. And we have a range of different strategies and approaches to make sure that that happens. Within our college, we have two student experience and wellbeing managers, one of whom is Rose, the other is Vicky. And um, I think Rose may put up the next, oh, I have the clicker. In fact, I can put up the next slide. And you'll see here the philosophy that we have, our approach towards ensuring this high quality student experience. The uh, mission behind everything we do is partnership with students. You'll see here the word community, you'll hear communications, how we contact you, how we get in touch with you, how we encourage that development of you, of students, and how we want to listen to your feedback, more of that in a moment. So that underpins everything that we do. Within your schools, you have student experience officers. You may well have met them already. If you haven't, some of them are here today. So do come and find them, meet them, talk to them, ask them all the questions that you have. The second thing is the support that we provide for you here in the college. As we've said, you're a very diverse student group. You all come with very different needs, and that's why we have a range of support available to all of our students. You've heard from Celia about personal academic tutoring and our commitment to that uh, across the whole university. We've also got school wellbeing officers whose role is for you to go to to talk about your wellbeing, to think about do I need some additional support that they can refer you to. Perhaps it might be something as simple as an extension. Whatever your need, they are there as that first point of call. 
everybody, from your program administrators to your program directors, your module leaders, your tutors, and your teaching team. Everybody has a focus on supporting you. And the third area I mentioned is getting involved. You heard from Ness about all the different ways you can connect with the Guild, you can meet other students. You can do that development of yourself as a student and meet new people. Deborah's talked about her focus in terms of leading education within the university. And she talked about being a community that's incredibly important for you, whether you're thinking about that in relation to your programme, your department, your school, or indeed the college and beyond. You are a community of learners. The people around you, the people on your programme, might become your lifelong friends. They're certainly your support, they're your help, they're your guide. I'm certainly in, in contact still with friends I met at my time at university. We're committed to having you uh, speak to us. We want to listen to you. Your voice matters to us. So we want you to get involved, whether that is as an ambassador, as a student rep, as a volunteer, there are paid roles. We want you to become involved in your community, again, to make it the best that it can be. So finally, we want you to enjoy this next time here. There is a freebie giveaway that you'll have seen or you will see in a moment as you come through. Do post a question for us. We're here to take questions, but come and chat to us, as Celia said, whether that's on campus, whether that's after this event, come and speak to us, ask us anything about your programme, about your experience, or something you're just not sure about, and we're just like a friendly face. That's what we are also here to be. And finally, enjoy the next few weeks and months, and indeed years, however long your time is at university. This is a new season. It's a series of firsts for you. You may not have a new bag or a new pair of shoes like you had when you started school or a new school year, but this is a new season, a journey, a journey of learning, a journey of getting to know your discipline, your colleagues, your peers, and the university. It's lovely to have you with us, and we wish you um, a wonderful programme of study here. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Thank you very much to all of our speakers. We're going to be moving on to the Q&A session. So if our ambassadors want to come and join us down here, um, so this will be our Q&A panel. You've already been introduced to all of us. If you haven't opened the, the Slido yet, then please do so. And we've already got some questions coming in. So as our ambassadors, ambassadors, please come to the front. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we've got those on that side as well. <laughs> um, so while we wait for our ambassadors to come down, one of the questions is, how do you become a student ambassador? Um, so our lovely student experience ambassadors, I think we've got a team of kind of 10 to 15. Uh, they work with us throughout the year on all sorts of student experience stuff, including events, um, co-designing co activities, helping us create the newsletters that you'll receive every week. Um, and how you become one, uh, we will be recruiting them in the summer for the next year. We might do a second round of recruitment this year, um, but we will let you know. So keep an eye on your emails for that. And a related question, aside from student ambassadors, what other jobs can I get at university? Um, if you go on the Guild of Students website, I'm, I'll pass it to you if you want to say anything. Uh, the Guild of Students website has loads of job opportunities. There's also work link in the Guild of Students, uh, which has loads of stuff on the website as well. Is there anything you wanted to add to that one? Yeah, we have a variety of different jobs from receptionists, bartenders, waitresses, all sorts of types of jobs. If you look on the Guild website, it's really awesome. Lots of opportunities there. Yeah, we'd definitely recommend. And then once you have a job, you can call, uh, call on the Careers Network to um, kind of explain how you develop those skills. Even if you work behind a bar or, you know, do something that you don't think will be relevant to your future career, you'll, you'll develop kind of communication skills and money skills and all sorts of stuff. So Careers can help you turn that into a CV um, and a lovely interview. Um, Questions, okay. So, um, I'm just looking for stuff that I can. How can I join a society if I miss the society's fair? 
If you just go onto the Guild website, on there there's a list of all 353 different societies. If you scroll through there and select the society that you like, and you can purchase your membership on there. That's great. Would recommend joining a society as well. It's really fun, and you meet so many cool people. Um, the top one is, where do I get my timetable? I'm in the School of Social Policy. So your timetable should be released this week. I know that there was a bit of a delay on some of them. You'll get an uh, email from your education support team. Um, so if you Google contact my school, University of Birmingham, it will come up with all of the contacts. If you don't have it late yet, you can email them there. Um, I, can, I can do a QR code later, later on for that as well. Um, I've got one for our ambassadors. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I don't know who wants to take this. How, um, how do you manage time between joining societies, being a student ambassador, and your lessons? Obviously, they're only just student ambassadors. They've just been hired. So, But does anyone want to answer this one? Does that work? Yeah. Um, Obviously, like when you when you just join, it does seem really daunting. But um, it does sound basic. But planning your time well with buy as many planners and journals and diaries as you can. Just write down everything that you need to do for your week. Allocate what day, what time you're going to do it. If you need anything to do that, so books from the library. Plan when you're going to get them to do your reading and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I just say plan maybe every like Saturday or Sunday, plan what you're going to do for the next week. Um, and definitely plan time in as well though for like rest and relaxation. Because um, in the first few weeks I feel like you can overload yourself um, and you do need to, to allocate some time for that. I don't know if there's anyone. That's great, thank you very much. Um, we've got another one. What's the best thing about the College of Social Sciences? So I'm particularly looking at Amory and Richard, is there anything you want to say? Um, well, judging by the queues, the Starbucks at the bottom of Muirhead Tower, um, <laughs> my strong advice if you want a cup of coffee is to go there not uh, just before the hour, because that's when the queues are, are particularly the, the best kept secret is the Costa in the Alan Walters building, mm. um, because the queues are much shorter there and it's only a two minute walk away from the Muirhead Tower. Anne-Marie, did you want to say? Well, I was going to say the proximity to many coffee outlets, um, but I think uh, that's been made clear. I think we've said a little bit about just the broad range of programmes, the diversity of the disciplines, but also that real focus on context, as Richard has said. You know, people exist in a context, in an environment, and those of us that are social scientists certainly understand and appreciate the impact and influence of that. So you are an individual in a context yourself and hope, hopefully that's something that you understand too. But the opportunity to engage with all those other peers undertaking different disciplines, I think, is really interesting. Yeah, I would just echo that and add to it. Um, we like to think that uh, we, we shape the people who will then shape society as, as social scientists. Um, so whatever you go on to do, you will have an impact on society and hopefully we can have a part in, um, in developing you that way. So yeah, thank you very much for joining me. Um, is the food at the sports day free? <laughs> yes, it's free and it's gonna be really good to advise yeah. you come. <laughs> okay. Uh, who do we talk to if we have any queries about changing our current course? Um, I'm also going to answer a few of them at the same time. So how do I find out who, who my personal tutor is? Um, and where was the other one? There was, okay, I'll answer those two. So anything related to your program or finding out who your personal tutor is, you contact your education support team. Um, so again, uh, Google contact your school, University of Birmingham, and it will come up with the page. Again, I'll hang around afterwards to, to show you how to do that. Um, what if I don't know how to write a dissertation? Does anyone want to answer that? Well, in your third year, you'll be assigned a dissertation tutor and you'll receive a lot of guidance and each school has its own set of guidance and you will meet with the person that's supervising so that will support you through the writing of your dissertation. And you will start thinking about it in the, in the last term of your second year and you'll get support from the moment you start thinking about it to the moment you hand it in. Thank you. Um, I'm worried about making friends and being sad and lonely. How do you make friends? 
this is a this is one I get quite a lot. So whoever you are, uh, you're not alone. Um, ambassadors, does anyone want to answer that? It should be on already. Um, I would just say be really open. Um, see every opportunity as an opportunity to meet people. So um, have your head up when you're going to lectures. Have a chat with who you're sat next to. Um, it feels a bit weird, but everyone feels the same as you and everyone wants friends. So um, just don't be scared to be the person to speak first and be open. Does anyone else want anything? That's lovely. Thank you so much. And okay, there's like a guild oh, point. Yeah. Also join things, like join societies that you couldn't you wouldn't normally join, join different things, because that's where I met some of my closest friends on my societies. And also, education officer hat off and student hat back on. Join, like, go to your lectures, the first lectures, sit next to people, chat with them. That's how I met some of my closest friends on my course. Thank you so much, that's lovely. Um, there was a couple about exchange students. So do exchange students have a personal tutor as well? So you will have a meeting with the exchange tutor, um, a study abroad tutor, rather than be assigned a personal tutor. But you will have a meeting as a group and you can request an individual meeting. And the related question, are there any opportunities for single semester international students to get involved with the College of Social Sciences? Yes, absolutely. We'll be doing so much stuff in the first semester and the second semester. Um, you can join a society for just that period that you're in. Um, just get involved in anything you can. Everything is open to you. Uh, what is the college slash university doing to improve sustainability? Can anyone answer that? Yeah, I can tackle that. Um, we're, we're trying to do um, quite, quite a bit at the moment. Um, earlier in the year, University of Birmingham joined a number of other universities in declaring a climate emergency. And, and in doing that, we, we want to make sure that we take some practical action. Uh, we, we're in the process of setting up something called the Birmingham Institute for Sustainability and Climate Action, um, which will draw together the, uh, the work that we do in areas like uh, clean energy, uh, clean water, clean air, um, really quite important work where there's a, a, a social science angle as well as a, a technological angle driven by our colleagues in the STEM colleges. Um, but I think I'd, I'd say to whoever's asked that question and any of you who are interested in this, so that there is certainly more that we can do and we're very keen to have students involved in that endeavor. So if you've got I ideas of um, discussions or talks that we could organize, uh, events that we could be involved in, ways that we can collectively contribute to uh, reversing the damage that is being done and has been done to the planet, then you know, please do speak up, talk to your tutors, uh, talk within your school, talk in the guild. Um, there are lots of different fora in which we can make a difference um, and it really is um, at the top of our agenda uh, right at the moment. Yeah, just to add to, to that, I think in the education space, we're doing a lot of work to develop um, more modules and quite disciplinary specific as well modules in relation to sustainability. Um, so we have some of those uh, starting already, um, but they'll be coming on board as well over the next couple of years. But also in terms of what Richard was just saying about, um, about getting involved, we have a new um, sustainability ambassador scheme which will be launching probably around week six of this semester. So please do watch out for that. We'll be sending details to Rose once it's up and running. So if you are really keen, um, then please do uh, sign up to be a sustainability ambassador. I, I think I'm also right in saying that those of you who are in the business school will, will have modules on uh, that cover carbon accounting. Uh, that's something that we've introduced new this year based out of the accounting department, but uh, I believe available to all students in the business school. And what I would say is that there are things that you can do yourself, quite simple things. So for example, having a, a clothes swap shop. Deborah and I are trying to be as sustainable as possible by not buying new work clothes and only buying, <laughs> which, buying clothes from eBay and Vinted. And so I now haven't bought any new clothes for, uh, I think it's three years. So all of my work clothes I'm buying
from either charity shops or Vinted. And that's something very simple that you could organise yourselves. Oh, and dare I say it, you could get the bus into town rather than an Uber. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And at a local level, uh, all of the merch that we give away is either recycled or has a sustainable focus. So we have reusable straws, bamboo toothbrushes, water bottles, um, and leads on to the tote bags, which someone has asked for, and nine people have voted, so everyone wants a tote bag, obviously. Um, we will be giving them away uh, next Wednesday. We're going to have another welcome fair, um, which I think is going to be in here. The welcome fair? Is it in the marquee? It'll be in the marquee uh, just outside, but we'll send you an email about that as well, so you can get all the merch you want. And we'll have mugs uh, after this as well. Um, what kind of occupations do students go on to achieve after studying social policy? Gosh, that's a really interesting question. I think the opportunity to become uh, involved and engaged in a huge variety of careers, so whether those are um, you know, actually in terms of social policy disciplines, so whether that's in government, uh, advising around social policy matters. In my own discipline, obviously, a social work qualification generally leads you to going on to be a social worker, but as a discipline that will cover a huge range of different um, learning materials within the programme, I think there's a wide range of career options available to you at the end of that. One of the things that we do offer is, is excellent career support. So from the moment you arrive, and even as alumni, there is the opportunity to engage with an advisor and start to think about where might I go? And you might not be at that point now, but certainly in those last few months of your programme or even earlier, um, or indeed a career change um, as a previous student, you can come to our careers advice and advisors and have a conversation about that with them too. Lovely, thank you. Um, just a quick one on the attendance policy. We will be sending more information about attendance on Monday. Um, we monitor attendance so that we make sure that everyone uh, is, is making the most of their university experience, but also if you miss a, f a few lectures in a row, we'll contact you to say, you know, is everything okay? Do you need any extra support? It's also really important for your, if you're on a, a student visa, um, because we need to show the home office that you're engaging with your uh, program. So please make sure that you're attending uh, your programs and that you're uh, logging your attendance on the MyOUOB app which again, we will send you more information on Monday. Um, we've got time for a couple more questions. Uh, what are the best thrift stores around the university? Or charity shops, as we call them in the UK? Um, well, I enjoy charity shopping. Um, there's, if you go into town, uh, into the city centre, there's a couple. Um, but you can also use the train links at the university. Um, and take the train to various little sort of towns around Birmingham and you can always find quite a lot of charity shops there. And there's also one in Selly Oak, which is on the corner of Healy Road, which is the road where the Selly Oak train station is. And that's actually where I bought this skirt. <laughs> so, but yeah, St Mary's Hospice is the local charity shop in Birmingham. There's one in Bourneville as well. So. Lovely, thank you very much. Are there many international or Erasmus students? Around half of our students in the College of Social Sciences are international, and we have about 10,000 students. So just in COS, we've got around 5,000 international students, and they're from all over the world. And Kerry told me the other day that she's got a student who is joining us from inside, I can't remember if it's the Arctic Circle, the Antarctic Circle, one of the circles with all the ice and possibly penguins and polar bears, um, <laughs> which that, is just Arctic, really huh? <laughs> So it'll be the Arctic one, yeah. Um, so our students are from all over the place, which is so um, amazing. Um, how do you become a student rep? Awesome question. If you go onto the Guild website, Guild, Guild of Students slash student reps, you can sign up to become a student rep there. All applications, if you do complete the application, you're successful and you automatically become a rep, which is really awesome. We have lots of reward and recognition as well, including, yeah, so very exciting. Yes, our rep system is based on volunteering rather than election. So actually, that, to make it fairer, so, we, so all of you, theoretically, could become a rep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, just a couple more. Are students allowed to join societies later or are they only allowed to join during the open sessions? You can join throughout the entire year. 
Great, that was it. <laughs> um, can international students that are arriving late join classes online? Unfortunately, legally, we're not allowed to uh, live stream classes this year. It's an, a law from the Home Office. But things will be recorded and materials will be available on Canvas for students to catch up when they arrive. Um, I think we're going to go for the... Oh, it's disappeared. But I think, because people keep voting, they keep moving. Um, the last one, I think, what opportunities outside university would you recommend we take advantage of? Outside the university? I think, actually, just spend the time going to a little part of the city each weekend. So if you're interested in art, going to some of the galleries and museums. If you're interested in thrift shops, going to some of them. But choose an area and find somebody local in your programme. Ask, actually ask, do you live in Birmingham? Where do you recommend I, I go? Because Birmingham's a very big city. It's got lots of smaller parts of the city as well that you could explore. And so you're not just joining a university, you're getting to know a new city and its geography and its, its area. So I, I recommend that. I don't come from the Midlands. It's taken me a long time to build up my knowledge of the city. But I'm, and Birmingham is great. You will have seen it on the Commonwealth Games, but it is big. So don't try and do it all, all in one weekend take a series of weekends to find out the best bits. Um, I've been in Birmingham for five years now, and one of the things I set myself to do was to work my way around the football grounds of the West Midlands. Um, so I can thoroughly recommend St Andrews, home of Bright Birmingham City Football Club, although I know a lot of my, my colleagues disagree with me on that. Uh, Villa Park is also great. Uh, I've even been to Solihull Moors uh, Football Club, who play in the National League, um, and, and which are uh, also a very good side. So um, that, that was my introduction to the, the different parts of um, Birmingham. Um, I wouldn't recommend Walsall, though, because uh, I watched a terrible game there. Yeah, just to say, I mean, I think if you, if you want to go sort of walking or out into the more sort of countryside, the Licky Hills is a, it's just a short bus route away. Um, it's really lovely in the autumn and coming into winter as well. So, you know, over the next term, it's, it's really lovely just to go and kind of blow some cobwebs away there. Um, and if you find the bit that has the Rose Hotel at the bottom, there's a really good kind of bacon sandwich shop, which is great if you've just done a big hike around the hills. Okay. Ambassadors, anything, any recommend, uh, re recommendations? Oh. Yeah, Lucky Hills is great. Um, there's loads of like other places to go and see. Um, but yeah, the city centre at least will take you a while to get your head round. Um, but once you do, uh, you get to see lots of cool things. But yeah, I can't recommend like the museums and art galleries enough. They're really fun. And like, especially if you go to the barber on campus, uh, like we have our own, our own art gallery, that's great as well. So, yeah, I am. Um, uh, from a personal note, I started here 12 years ago this September as a student, um, and I did uh, my three years undergrad. Basically, stayed in Selly Oak the whole time, and maybe went to town a few times, and that was it. Then I did my masters and moved to Kings Heath, and I was like. Birmingham is amazing. Like, there is so much around here. And I think everyone thinks that Birmingham's a bit rubbish. But actually, in this 12 years that I've lived here, it's, it's just become such a center of amazingness. There's all sorts of kind of independent stuff. There's independent Birmingham, look that up. Um, there's, a, there's a thing called Yup as well, which you can get all sorts of kind of uh, like little indie local business um, experiences. Um, and yeah, once you're here for a while, you can see why we're called the city of a thousand trades because, you know, we've got HSBC here, we're getting the BBC here soon. Um, we're a center of industry and center of trade and, and everything. And uh, at the Commonwealth Games, this is just, I, I get really funny about Birmingham because I love it so much. The Commonwealth Games, Ozzy Osbourne at the end going, Birmingham forever, literally tears. So I really hope that you, um, you have the same kind of experience as Birmingham that I have because I will never leave this place now. Love it so much. And I think quite a lot of our students uh, stay in uh, Birmingham, don't they, afterwards? I can't remember what the percentage is, but a, a significant percentage do uh, because it's so fabulous, so please explore it. Okay, I think that's all the time we have for questions. I'll hang around at the front here um, afterwards. Ambassadors, if you want to go and remove the, the screens from, <laughs> from the mugs. Um, I'll hang around here for questions um, that we didn't cover. Um, and then you can get your free social scientist mugs. And can I just say thank you very much to our panelists?
fun. Enjoy your time at Birmingham, and we're here to support. Okay. That's great.